What's going on guys? It's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and this is the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus. This is the newest tactile transducer from Butt Kicker, the name synonymous with base shakers in the world of sim racing. So this is one of three new offerings from Butt Kicker this year and today I'm going to review this Gamer Plus. Let's get into it. Okay, so as mentioned, today I'm going to be reviewing the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus. This is one of three new offerings from Butt Kicker. It's, it's big news because Butt Kicker is so popular in sim racing. Uh, they've kind of become... I think it's called an eponym for base shakers. You don't usually say, are you putting a base shaker on your rig? You usually say, are you gonna add a butt kicker? So a um, huge portion of the market share in base shakers, tactile transducers, haptic transducers, whatever you wanna call it, um, it, it belongs to butt kicker. So uh, really cool that they're coming out with three new products. Uh, two of them are base shakers and the third product is actually the software that's going to support these base shakers. So this is the Gamer Plus. It's the um, sort of mid-tier offering right now. The upper tier is the Gamer Pro. Uh, the difference is basically this is this is ships with a 90 watt amplifier and the butt kicker itself has a six ounce moving mass and the gamer pro which i don't have uh, has a one pound moving mass if i'm not mistaken and a 150 watt amplifier so it's for larger rigs um, but i talked to butt kicker and they thought the gamer plus would be good enough for me and the third product is perhaps the most exciting it's the happy connect software so usually it's strictly an audio signal that you're you're dealing with uh in in, in the butt kicker world, um, but now butt kicker is looking to use uh, telemetry from the racing sim that you're involved with, or that you're playing rather, uh, to turn that into the rumble. So uh, very exciting year for butt kicker. Um, I'm excited to try this out. Uh, they, they were very, very good. They shipped this to me nice and early. I've just been sitting, staring at it, busy with other things, but uh, I'm excited to uh, try this out. And for full disclosure, uh, this was sent to me for review. So um, I didn't pay anything for this unit. All right, so let's uh, get this unboxed. We'll talk about the, the uh, sort of uh, features that, that ship with the Gamer Plus, and then I'm going to get it mounted, and then of course test drive it. So, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and get this open. So, unsurprisingly, open the box, and there is a quick start guide and an owner's manual. Looks to be fairly self-explanatory. A little bit of protective foam for the shipping. And then we see, hopefully you guys can see that, the general layout of the box. Not overly tightly packed. Uh, this is your 90 watt amplifier. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. Um, it's got, across the front of your amplifier, it's got the volume controls and then, the cutoff frequency can be adjusted with this middle knob right here. And then moving left, we have uh, what your cutoff frequency is. And then on off button, and then a low filter cutoff button. So uh, fairly basic uh, buttons up front. And then if we turn around back, we have the power input, power cable input here. On off switch. And then we have a USB input. It's tough to see, but there is a USB input there. And then RCA, two in, one out. And then the speaker connections. So yeah, that's your 90 watt amplifier. Uh, fairly small unit. I'm gonna say it's, what, 10 inches by 10 inches, roughly, maybe eight inches by eight inches. So not big by any means, not heavy by any means. Nice compact unit. Moving along to the butt kicker, the tactile transducer itself. Again, quite small. You can see it compared to my hand. So fairly small unit. Long cable with uh, looks to be one male, one female connection at the end of it. Kind of a unique cable. Not sure if you guys can see that, but I'll try and get some better pictures. And this Gamer Plus, uh, there's actually two methods of mounting it. So um, if you have owned a butt kicker in the past, you know about their universal mount. So it's got this clamp here. And again, I'll try and get some better shots of this, but basically you can back this piece here off and then the clamp swings open. 
can back this out. And this will clamp onto just about anything you want. Like uh, my Next Level Racing FGT Elite cockpit, for example, comes with a post uh, that you can hard mount to your rig and then just clamp this onto the post. This can also clamp onto the stem of your gaming chair. Basically anything you want. Um, it, it, it's a really, really well done universal mount and uh, fairly easy to use. Everything is just hand tightened and it can get a pretty good grip. Um, yeah, unit itself, this is the Gamer Plus as mentioned, so it has a six ounce moving mass inside it. The Gamer Pro has a one pound moving mass, but of course that one pound takes more power, so it'll ship with a 150 watt amp. And I'll get into the full specs and price of that in a second, but uh, as I say, Quite small, quite compact little unit here. And this Gamer Plus does allow you to hard mount this. So there's one, two, three mounting holes. Kind of an awkward number, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, so three mounting holes so you could hard mount it wherever you want. But uh, this universal clamp is how most people choose to mount their butt kicker. Just a couple more things to open up here. This audio cable. So again, we have this uh, this one male, one female connection uh, for the speaker. And then it splits into two, uh, left and right. And these are, is it speak on? I can't remember what the name of those connectors is, but or those plugs rather. Uh, but this should plug right into the back of the amplifier. So uh, nice, easy to connect. Next bag contains the power cable. Again, this is the US version. So uh, this is a US plug and a bit of either Velcro or hook and loop, depending on how much butt kicker chose to spend on their cable management. And then finally, two more products. Uh, we have uh, audio cables. Uh, well, sorry, there's a USB cable in there as well. I uh, don't know if I want to crack the Yeah, let's crack the bag. Why not? This is a review after all. Let me get this ugly box out of the way. Can you guys still see me? Yes, you can still see me. So, um, uh, braided cables. Thank you, butt kicker. I love when companies ship with braided cables. So it looks to be a standard USB to USB-C cable. And again, I will get closer shots of that. There is also a TRSS, I believe, cable that splits into two smaller, uh, or splits into two other, uh, it's like headphone style, so one eighth inch. I don't know if this is TRSS or TRS, but uh, anyway, there's a splitter cable. And then the last cable is a TRSS to RCA dual. And then, we have the remote control. One of the big features is this wireless remote control uh, that Butt Kicker is now shipping for uh, control of your amplifier. So that's great, one less cable. Um, by the way, good time to announce, I did used to own a Gamer 2. Um, I got it just after I got my uh, seat mover, my uh, Motion Platform V3. So I found it kind of redundant. There was a lot of cables and it was just, frankly feeling a bit cluttered in my space and uh, I had a friend that wanted to try it so I shipped it to him and uh, hopefully he's enjoying that but I did own a game or two before uh, again it felt kind of redundant and uh, a bit too many cables uh, for my setup so I got rid of it um, but I'm excited to try this gamer plus um, yeah so we got all our cables here and it looks like everything is ready to go. So uh, next steps is I'm going to run you guys through the features of the Gamer Plus and Gamer Pro and talk a bit about the Haptic Connect software that will allow you to use the um, the in-game telemetry, or not telemetry, but the in-game, I guess telemetry, uh, to tell the butt, kiss, butt kicker system which frequencies, which uh, sensations to reproduce through this butt kicker module. Um, so yeah, I'll run you through that and I'm gonna get this mounted and then we'll go ahead and test drive it and I'll give my final thoughts. All right, so a quick rundown of features of the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus. The Gamer Plus is one of three new offerings for 2022 from Butt Kicker, and it joins the Gamer Pro and the Haptic Connect software, which is the next evolution behind the Butt Kicker Gamer 2 units that are so popular. Both the Gamer Plus and the Gamer Pro models are tactile transducers, meaning they take the sounds of your games and turn the low-end frequencies into vibrations. 
And much of my audience, I'm sure, is here from the sim racing world, but the unit works equally well for flight sims, first-person shooters, role-playing games, movies, or anything else you'd want to feel instead of just hear. And before I get into the specs of the Gamer Plus and Pro, let me give you a quick rundown of the HaptiConnect software. It's a PC-based program that takes in-game telemetry like suspension, track surface, and engine RPMs to produce haptic feedback. And the best news is that it works with all models and generations of butt kicker transducers and amplifiers. It's a PC only feature and you can choose to use the new butt kicker models as strictly an audio device if you'd like with the included cables which will allow you to use the units with either a PC or an Xbox or PlayStation console. The pricing structure for the software is somewhat complex as there are three tiers of the program. The way it works is that the audio routing is handled in the software at a minimum, which is included with the base version. The other tiers of the software are the standard and ultimate editions. Both use the in-game telemetry to produce the haptic effects and they are priced at $30 and $60 respectively. Until the end of June, the standard version will be included with the Gamer Plus and Pro units and the ultimate will be a $30 upgrade. So what are the differences between standard standard and ultimate, basically the number of enabled games. The Haptic Connect software treats each title as a plugin and the Ultimate Edition allows you access to all current and future plugins while the standard version only includes all of the plugins up to March 1st of 2022 and future plugins can be added a la carte for between $3 and $10 each. Next, let's talk about the two new units, the Gamer Plus that I have, along with the higher-end Gamer Pro. Both are tactile transducers, or bass shakers, as I see them most commonly called. The Plus uses a 90-watt amplifier to drive a shaker that uses a 6-ounce moving mass to produce its effects, and the Pro uses a 150-watt amplifier to drive a shaker that uses a 1-pound moving mass. Both use a clamp to mount onto a gaming chair or sim racing rig, or basically anything, or you can use the mounting feet on the Gamer Plus to attach it. The MSRP for the Gamer Plus is $280, and the Pro carries an MSRP of $330. Both sets are equipped with everything you need to get up and running, including the haptic transducer, the amplifier, wireless remote, cable, and cable ties, and both accept 100 to 240 volt inputs. Okay guys, so as soon as I plugged the USB cable into my computer, uh, Windows 10 did recognize the amplifier, installed it as the Gamer Plus from Butt Kicker. Uh, drivers went in, no problem. And then I got the Hapti Connect software installed. In this case, I just have the reviewer license. So the games that are included here, we have plugins for Assetto Corsa, Dirt Rally 2, iRacing, and Project Cars 2. As it stands, I don't have an active iRacing iRacing subscription and I don't have Project Cars 2 installed so I'm going to be testing using Assetto Corsa and Dirt Rally 2. Now, from what I can see of this software, there's basically two ways to use it. Uh, one is the Game Connect, which I have here, and what that is going to do is take telemetry and output data from your sims and create haptic effects from that. So again, we have these plugins for these games to make that happen. And there's a configure screen for the output. You can, if you have two butt kickers, either placed left and right, two butt kickers at the front and rear, or if you have four butt kickers, you can configure that here. In this case, I just have the one. So I'm gonna choose mono. And then for your output, there's a virtual input that's created when you install your butt kicker. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to choose the butt kicker plus output. And just to make sure I have the right one selected, I'm gonna, gonna click test. And I'm not sure if you guys could hear that or not, but the test was successful. I could feel that rumbling through my chair and it even made the buttons on my wheel rumble. It's pretty powerful, so very impressive. Now, uh, let's go back to the main screen here. Game Connect is one way to get those rumble effects. We can also go up here to the top and choose the audio splitter option. So again, a virtual input was created uh, when you install your butt kicker, and then you can choose where that audio is routed. In this case, I have selected two. My typical, U whoops, it's a lot of outputs. In this case, the USB audio codec, which is my main output, uh, that's what I use day to day, and then the new butt kicker plus. So basically two outputs uh, for that audio, but I'm gonna keep it game connect for now. Um, again, I only have two of the four games here installed. So I'm gonna try this in Dirt Rally 2 using the game connect. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
All right, guys, so uh, apologies for the crude shot here, the terrible light, but what you're actually looking at is the very back of my sim rig. This is, this surface here is the back of my seat. And so what I've done just temporarily uh, to mock this thing up, this won't be the final location of my butt kicker, um, but the ES1 seat from Next Level Racing does have these two threaded holes in the back. So what I've done with that is I've mounted the post, the butt kicker mounting post um, that's included with the, uh, uh, with the ES1 seat and use that as the post then clamped on my transducer here my butt kicker gamer plus and then I've got the amplifier just sitting on top of a box for now I just wanted to get the amplifier and the transducer in one shot so this is at the back of my rig I don't have power back here so the amplifier is gonna have to move uh, but for now this is where I have it but uh, yeah it's all it's all set up it's all connected I've got the speaker cable connected from the back of the amplifier uh, to the transducer. I've got the USB connected to the computer which is not turned on and then I've got the power and the remote control seems to work perfectly. Um, yeah, I could just cycle through the volume levels here, turn the rumble effect up and down. I can also control at which frequency the higher uh, frequency signal is starting, uh, begins to be ignored or turn it off altogether. And I can also turn on and off the low cut filter. So yeah, that's basically it. So uh, great to have this. It's great to not have the wired control. There's too many wires with the Gamer 2 in my opinion. So the wireless controller to me is a big deal and uh, seems to work perfectly. All right, so I think we have everything ready to go. As I say, it's all connected. Just need to turn on the computer. Uh, I got the software installed, the Haptic Connect software that is. Turn the amplifier on, we should be good to go. All right, guys, so something I didn't cover uh, before was that the Haptic Connect software allows you to configure individual parameters. So I've done a bit of messing around here, um, testing out things, and uh, I've got it to where I, I think I prefer sort of the more pronounced effects rather than the general rumble of the road. So I've got things tweaked a little bit it's not perfect but uh, a little bit more to my liking so I'm gonna do some testing here in Dirt Rally 2 and just a light rumble right now as I sit there idling or not idling as sit there revving before the start of the run so yeah pretty sharp effects right now and one thing that I found right away that I love especially here in Finland is those jumps the seat just goes totally numb so it gives you that sensation of, of flying through the air whereas this with the more rough surface I mean it's just a constant assault of rumble and it feels really really cool I don't think for the price I don't think there's anything even close to this level of immersion it's really impressive whoa Might have lost the rear bumper there. Yeah, it's it's like I've I've been practicing this for roughly the past half an hour to an hour, and uh, you know got things a little more dialed into my liking. But more than anything, what I'd say is that uh, it's it's hard to imagine doing without it at this point. Like I told you guys before that uh, I got rid of my gamer two because it was just it felt like a lot of cables and it felt unnecessary with the uh, motion seat but I will say that with the motion seat turned off this is a great substitute and again for that you know roughly $300 price point depending on what you go with for the plus or the pro I mean this is just a, a no-brainer as far as adding immersion to your experience Yeah, it's, it, this is not necessarily the whoops sim you'd want to use to uh, really get the different sensations down. Like, for example, with the Seto Corsa Competizione, you might set it up to where your uh, when your wheels are slipping that you can feel that. But this one, of, of course, in, in Rally, your, your wheels are constantly slipping, so uh, you'd have to do some real tweaking to... Uh, 
to get things to the point where uh, that mattered. But I'm not there yet. But uh, even with this basic setting that I've done so far, uh, things are feeling really, really nice. And again, that numbness. When you go over a jump is just the, the coolest thing ever. So yeah, very good. Very, very nice. Oh, here's a jump. And the dirt <laughs> splash from me landing actually came in front of the car. That was a pretty neat effect. Um, but yeah, so far so good with the Gamer Plus. As I say, just uh, really cost-effective immersion. That was not a cost-effective wreck. Limping across the finish line here. Um, yeah, felt really good. Uh, so well done on the Haptic Connect. Uh, now I'm gonna try it with some audio. So let's let's get into that. All right, guys, so testing here with the audio split function. So what this actually does is it takes the in-game audio and effectively splits it. Uh, one signal, one path goes to your butt kicker. The other path goes to your usual speakers and headphones. So super easy to configure, no issues there. The good news is it works in every game. You don't need plugins like you do with the Happy Connect telemetry game mode. But the bad news is, and the reason I'm doing this audio in post, is that you need to have your volume up quite high. So I had to set, normally I run when I'm recording with the volume at about 20%. In this set of course of test, I had to have it at about 90%. So it did work as promised, but the problem is I had to have the volume so high that I couldn't do my audio recording during it. So that's the reason I'm doing this in post, but I have to say it worked to perfection. Now, I didn't like the effects as much, and the reason I say that is because it's not actually taking telemetry. It doesn't actually know when you're going over a curb or when the wheels are slipping, etc. It's looking for those bass frequencies to reproduce, to turn into that haptic feedback, and that doesn't always happen. So this was much more of a generic rumble and that wasn't really what I was looking for with my butt kicker experience. So um, of the two so far of the Game Connect in Dirt Rally 2 and also the audio splitter mode, uh, definitely I prefer the former. It just felt a lot more informative and I could tune it to my liking, whereas you're just sort of stuck with whatever the game is producing in bass frequencies when you go with the audio split mode. But I have to say it was up and running right away and you don't have to worry about plugins. So there is a simplicity factor to using audio. But one more test I want to do is using uh, what I consider to be sort of the de facto base shaker configuration software, which is SimHub. So let's go ahead and try that test now. All right, guys. So here in Automobilista 2, and uh, as mentioned, we're going to use the SimHub to uh, the SimHub software rather to get the base effects. And um, yeah, I spent about half an hour dialing this in getting things to my liking. I have to tell you, uh, this is comfortably the best it's felt. So I, I think more than the uh, Haptic Connect, I, I think I definitely prefer the uh, SimHub software. I can get things exactly to my liking. So um, I don't have very much road rumble here. My effects are, are focused primarily on uh, tire scrub and curb detail. And uh, the shifts are, are quite dramatic. You can really feel like a kick in your back from the shifts. And uh, it's more than I was able to extract from the Happy Connect software. Now, that's not to say that it won't be possible again. I'm using a reviewer's license and uh, the software isn't even available for purchase yet. So what this, what the Happy Connect software will be capable of in the future, I don't know. But I can tell you that so far, I, I definitely prefer uh, SimHub. So again, I, I focus mainly on not the uh, sort of ongoing, just the constant rumble of the road, but uh, I got a good amount of feedback, of haptic feedback from going over curbs, good amount of haptic feedback from the shift, and it feels really, really phenomenal. This is just uh, next level. This is a car and a sim that I love a lot, and really adding that extra haptic feedback just kicking me in the back every time I shift gears and you know I've got it set intentionally high so it doesn't have to be that that dramatic but uh, yeah having that extra kick every time I shift having that rumble every time I go over a curb just phenomenal so the 
Gamer Plus itself, I, I, I don't think I could really be happier with it. I think as, you know, if you're in the market for a base shaker, of course, of course, this is the way to go. And I'm sure the Pro is this plus a little bit extra, or a lot extra. Depends on the rig you're running, but uh, for me, the, the Plus is more than enough. I have the volume set to 28, so roughly half the max. It goes all the way up to 50, and I can't imagine tapping into 50, um, for my preferences anyway. I think it might get uh, pretty loud for your neighbors and family members if you had it all the way at the highest setting. And for me, it's more than enough, so... Yeah, just uh, very, very happy. As I say, I had to use the Sim Hub to really get the most out of this, and even this is only a half hour of playing with it, so there's more tweaking to be done. And the second advantage of the Sim Hub, um, as well, is the, uh, or the second advantage of the Sim Hub, I should say, is that it can work with any game, whereas you need plugins for the Happy Connect software, so. Yeah. That might be the way to go, in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, this Gamer Plus just brings a smile to my face. So, um, yeah, really loving it. Really loving the improvements, uh, the Gamer Plus from the Gamer 2 that I had before. And even in a sim that I know and love like this, uh, you know, where I have pretty much everything dialed to my liking, adding in the, uh, the tactile transducer really adds to the sensation of realism, adds to the immersion, and uh, for the price point, as I said before, I don't think you can get, you know, much more immersion for that price, so really nicely done. All right, so that's it, and uh, now I'm going to roll into my final thoughts. All right, guys, so final thoughts on the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus and Happy Connect software as I've reviewed today. Um, so I'll start off with the good things I do like about the uh, Gamer Plus and start off with the value. The value is just off the charts. We've known that about Butt Kicker for many years, and that doesn't change with this Gamer Plus and Gamer Pro. Roughly $300, depending on whether you go with the Plus or the Pro. Um, but for that money, I don't think you can do any better as far as value for adding immersion to your sim racing or flight or RPG FPS experience. Really tremendous, and uh, I think they do a tremendous job with that. So, um, Again, just off the charts value, so uh, that is definitely number one. Uh, the second thing is things they have improved on this uh, Gamer Plus versus the Gamer 2. I like the wireless remote control, that's big for me. It seems that they've cleaned up the cables overall, which, is, which was a big thing. Again, when I had my Gamer 2, the reason I wasn't really into it was first and foremost, I had the seat mover and the extra sensations I, you know, mattered a lot less to me, but also the cabling. It just seemed like there was cables everywhere, but it's definitely been simplified with going with the uh, USB connection and also having the wireless remote. So uh, big new features there. And uh, the next one is the universal clamp which uh, you guys didn't get to see much of, but this little universal clamp, the fact that not only can it go onto a high-end sim rig, but it can also go into just a generic, or rather go onto a generic office chair if that's what you sim race on. The fact that there's no real barrier for uh, entry with adding immersion uh, just is a huge plus for the butt kicker uh, uh, system for me. So uh, that is the third one is this universal clamp and the fact that it you know opens the doors to whatever you sim race on, you will get added immersion uh, from this butt kicker. And also that uh, this is plug and play. I mentioned before that it was USB and as soon as I plugged it into my computer, it recognized it, good to go, boot up the Haptic Connect software, no connection issues whatsoever. Um, so there was no run around and uh, really connected fast and easy. So well done to butt kicker on those things. So, uh, things I don't like as much, number one, I'm sure you guys sensed this through the video, the Haptic Connect software, I just didn't con connect with it, ironically. Um, in theory, it, it, it's great. I did have a good experience in Dirt Rally, but once I got into SimHub and uh, started really tweaking the individual parameters, there was far more ability to tweak with SimHub than I had with Haptic Connect, um, and it just, for me, I was able to get a lot more out of it. So Haptic Connect seems fine, but you have to sort of pretend that Sim Hub doesn't exist first in order for Haptic Connect to be relevant. So um, 
in my mind, in my opinion, uh, at least for now, uh, you know, as I say, I have the review version of Happy Connect, so it's possible that it'll improve, but I think if you have Sim Hub, you're probably good to go. And the second thing I don't like, and it's it's nothing to do with the butt kicker, nothing to do with Gamer Plus, um, it's just the fact that this is noisy. This is, uh, that's the trade-off of adding that immersion, of adding that rumble, is that it is noisy. It does tend to shake the walls of the house, and you know if you have a mechanical connection to your floor, your downstairs neighbors are going to hear it. If you have roommates, family members you're living with, uh, they will hear this thing. So again, it's, it's not a shortcoming of the unit itself, just more of a buyer beware. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my review of the Butt Kicker Gamer Plus. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, for the value, uh, for what you pay for this, the amount of immersion you get is huge. Um, I wasn't smitten with the Gamer 2, but I think I'm going to keep this Gamer Plus attached to my rig for some time to come, even with the motion seat. Um, it's I've really enjoyed it that much, and taking the time, um, you know, to dial in a Sim Hub setting and getting it really to my liking has really added uh, to my appreciation for what uh, Butt Kicker does, and it's sort of given me an understanding of why these things are so popular, why people love bass shakers so much. It really is that next level of immersion, and again, at the $300 price point, I don't think you can really go wrong. So, well done to Butt Kicker, a uh, great unit, and um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.